one of the most prominent features in Escape from Tarkov is the complex weapon modding. This extremely detailed system allows you to experiment with a wide variety of available attachments and fit your gun to fulfill the desired role. Welcome to Gun Nut. It might not look very intimidating, but looks can be deceiving. In today's episode, the SKS. When firearms are the focus point of a video game, vintage rifles are always a welcome addition to the arsenal. And with over 75 years in service, the SKS is one of them. Or self-loading carbine of the Simonov system, widely known as the SKS-45, is a Soviet-made, semi-automatic carbine designed in 1943 by Sergei Simonov. Although being a semi-automatic weapon, its predecessor, design-wise, the AVS-36, was one of the first selective fire infantry rifles used from 1936 to 1945. However, due to the lack of proper maintenance, the grease on the rifle would often freeze in low temperatures, making the weapon completely unusable. Furthermore, the muzzle brake design proved to be a failure, as it was next to impossible to shoot in fully automatic mode, resulting in production termination in 1938. The Soviets needed an upgrade. Rechambered from 7.62 by 54 MMR to 7.62 by 39 and stripped of select fire capability, the SKS was born. Incorporating the semi-automatic firepower of the SVT-40, as well as the carbine size and the integral bayonet of the M44, it was officially adopted into the Soviet Army in 1949. Its service time was short-lived, however. By the end of the same year, it was rendered obsolete for Soviet purposes by the new AK-47. But that wasn't the end of the Simonov self-loading carbine, as it fit the needs of service of other Soviet-aligned countries, with the Chinese Army being one of them. The SKS, or the Type 56 carbine, was well suited for their guerrilla style of warfare. From its introduction in 1956, the Type 56 carbine remained the workhorse of the People's Liberation Army for 30 full years. The conventional layout of the SKS made it easy for many countries to adopt the weapon and fine-tune it to fit their desired purpose, with some of the many variants including the Yugoslavian PAP and East German Carabiner S. And to this day, over 15 million were built. The SKS has a short throw gas piston, features a tilting bolt, also used in the FAL, and has a 10-round internal box magazine which can be loaded either by hand or from a stripper clip. In Escape from Tarkov, however, it has a feed system of 20-round detachable box magazine. The fire rate of the SKS is decent, as the gun will shoot almost as fast as you can click the left mouse button, providing you with a very good fighting chance in close quarter combat. The weapon comes with a rear sight attached, although if not already, you should know that there is a slight difference in the view model with and without it. With the rear sight attached, the view model of the gun appears closer, however the rear sight slightly obstructs the view. And without it, you'll have a better chance of spotting, as well as staying on target. In Escape from Tarkov, it is fairly easy to obtain the SKS. You can purchase it for just about 24,000 rubles from level 1's gear, and already at level 2, you can buy the OP SKS, which features a dovetail mount for installation of different optics and mounts, such as the Cobra EKP-8 reflex sight, pilot mount, Axion Cobra mount, PSO, or the NSPUM night scope. But before we get into more detail about modifying the SKS, a commonly asked question is whether you can attach a PSO scope to this particular model. To be able to install a dovetail mount, the model of the weapon itself needs to be the hunting version, or the OP SKS in which case all you need to do is replace the standard Molot stock with the Tula Arms plant stock. Although the SKS currently has a rather limited assortment of modifications, the Tapco stock has been announced for one of the future updates, so we can expect to be able to mount different foregrips and butt stocks, as it will potentially increase the overall stats of the gun. And while on the subject, the recoil of the stock SKS is virtually non-existent. While shooting from a standing position and with no effort to control the recoil, the bullet groupings were surprisingly close together. Upon doing the same test but from a bit farther away, the results were almost the same, with the only consistent thing being the obvious difference between the first shot, after which the weapon kicks upwards and the recoil settles in for the following volley. 
Though the vertical recoil can only be felt during the first two shots, the rest will feel like they have more of a kickback, yet with minimal divergence. And naturally, the impacts will be spread more evenly on range. When firing controlled shots while prone, from approximately 200 meters, the performance is almost the same. Overall, it is a great choice for some mid-range sniping, especially if you're a fan of going in with some light gear. But before we get into the playstyle section, let's look at the modding options. The only way to attach an optic to the regular SKS is to fit it with the SOCOM rail mount, which you can either find in raids or buy from level 3 skier. This will allow you to fit the gun with reflex sights in a tactical device. Or two tactical devices. Or three tactical devices. To make the gun more suitable for a covert playstyle, you can attach a hexagon SKS suppressor available at level 3 skier as well. A lightly modded setup, but a hard hitter nonetheless. Even without a long range optic, you can fully rely on this weapon in most maps, especially interchange, customs and factory. Being that shoreline and woods give you many sniping possibilities, it would be best to bring in the hunting version or the OP SKS. The optimal setup would include the aforementioned SOCOM mount and a suppressor, a long range optic like the PSO-1 or in case you want the Alcan Spectre, Hammer, Bravo or ACOG. You can mount them using the Axiom Cobra or a Pilot mount. In case you decide to go with a hammer scope, you can simply add a delta point red dot sight on top, and depending on whether or not you need a tactical device, you may or may not keep the SOCOM mount. This option applies to some other optics, like the ACOG and Bravo. Also, the Axiom Cobra mount allows a tactical device to be attached while having a hammer scope with a red dot sight for instance. If, however, you decide to go with a PSO scope without losing the edge in CQB situations, you can install the MPR-45 with a red dot sight on your SOCOM rail mount. And still have a tactical device. As I already mentioned, the SKS is chambered in 7.62x39mm and features a twin round detachable box magazine as far as the feed system goes, as opposed to the standard 10 round internal box magazine commonly seen in other shooter games. But what about the damage output? and what type of ammunition would be best to use. There is a total of 5 different types of 7.62x39 to choose from. With the overall meta usefulness stat of 226, damage of 46 and penetration value of 45, the BP rounds are most effective when going against armor. However, they are also the most expensive ones. The PS would be the optimal choice as the price is almost 4 times lower and with a damage stat of 56, penetration value of 29 and the meta usefulness stat of 186, the PS rounds do extremely well in combat versus armored targets. The rest of the ammo types include the T45M or tracer rounds, hollow point which does very high damage though only against targets with no armor and the subsonic 7.62x39 US. While this is of course dependent on the situation, the tracer rounds should be avoided unless you want to give away your position, especially if playing solo. They can however help you out and let you know that you only have 5 or 6 shots left in the magazine, so you can simply load a few tracer rounds before loading the rest of your preferred ammunition. So basically, if you're a one percenter of Tarkov, go with the BP rounds. Otherwise, just stick with the PS ammo. Although surely not the best one, the SKS is still a viable choice for close quarter combat. You will however get the most out of this weapon when engaging from medium to long range. The damage drop off over range is not significant and it sometimes even appears as if you need less shots to take down an enemy at range. At 200 meters, the penetration damage also seems to be pretty much the same, however don't disregard the scope zeroing when going for long range shots. The simple setup, with only a PSO scope and a suppressor should be your number one choice if you want to do some sniping on a budget, and a great way to level up your DMR skill. It might seem like a big risk to go into a raid with little or no armor, and it can be. A big advantage that you can still have, even when going in light, is your playstyle. Knowing the map layout, knowing where the spawns are and being able to assess where you should move to if you hear early gunfire, all the while staying out of sight because when you think about it, being able to move quickly, having good situational awareness, displacing on time, checking the usual camping spots, those really are the things that you should be concentrating on. Until a Terminator scav ends you. Even though it is a low tier, simple weapon to use, the SKS is a great stepping stone in the Tarkov grind. A relatively low price, limited modding options and a moderately high firepower make this gun a great choice for a fast moving recon playstyle. 
Sometimes, the most expensive option is not the best one, and the SKS is here to prove it in the best way possible. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Yes.